Hey everybody and welcome. Well, today we're going to be talking about something pretty cool. We're going to be talking about City Mesh. Uh, basically, how to create a city in seconds, right? Here we go. Okay guys, well, we're in my 2019 and today we're going to be talking about City Mesh, right? Now, there are very few articles online about City Mesh. Not a lot of people use it or talk about it, so I thought it'd be a great uh, topic to do. And uh, I got this question from John Rafford, and John has been supporting my channel for years, so thank you for the cool question, John. Happy to help you out. All right, so City Mesh, what is it? Well, it's basically a method for you to quickly create buildings or even entire towns or cities for your scene. Let's say you need some backdrop where you need buildings or whatnot, you can easily do that. Now, depending on the Maya version you have, it used to be called a visor, and nowadays it's located under generate. So what you do is you go into the modeling menu and then you go up to generate right at the top here. When you click on that and you go down, it says get brush. Now that should already raise a red flag because what do you mean by brush or modeling something, right? Well, keep in mind that city mesh is a brush. So we're uh, using paint effects to create buildings. And how does that work out render wise? Well, I'm gonna walk you through all that stuff, okay? So we're now in um, uh, generate and we're gonna go to uh, paint effects and we're gonna go to the third option where it says city mesh right there, okay? Now, once you click on that, you see all sorts of cool stuff coming up here. You have the Chicago Tower, for example, and you see that it says .mel. So these are mel scripts, okay? So I'm gonna click on the first one, and when I hover my mouse over to the right, you'll see this kind of red funky ball type thing uh, popping up, and it has a little pencil or brush right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna left click, and I'm gonna slowly drag until I'm like halfway up, and then let go, right? And I actually waited too long, so now I got two blinks right here. Let me do that again. Boom. So just drag a little bit and boom. There you go. So that's one way to get one of these buildings in here. Now, if you do this really fast, you'll get something like this. And I assume you don't want that. But then again, that depends on what you're doing. If you have this way far in the back in the backdrop and it's kind of blurry, it could work as a skyline, right? So let's hit Control Z to go back. And we'll try a few others. So we've got this hotel right here. And again, we'll just click it a little bit until it's popping up like so. And if you do that a bit quicker, you can even vary the size somewhat. Now this is not the most interesting building, but just so you know. And we'll quickly walk through these options. Okay, so the Manhattan one and a very, very large brush here. Now, if you want to change that size, you can hold down B the B for Bernard or banana. So hold on B on your keyboard, left click and drag to make it bigger or smaller. So if you want it nice and small, you can now drag that out. You got tiny buildings. If you want it bigger, there you go. And this actually looks pretty cool. Now keep in mind that they're all pretty much the same building, but nevertheless, if you look at it from a distance, it looks kind of neat, right? Okay, so let's go back, Control Z. We'll jump to the next one. Uh, let's see, a quick street. Well, basically, there you go. Just popping some buildings out there. Skyscraper. And if you just pull in one line, you'll see that they'll intersect with each other. It's easier to just pull one up, pull one up, and so on, right? And you see that there's some variance in height, which is kind of neat. Let's go back and just get rid of those. And we're almost at the end there. And then when we're at the last one here, we're gonna talk about how to render all this stuff, okay? So we're gonna take this guy, town.mel. Now that's my personal favorite because if you just brush over a surface like this, let's say over a mountaintop or whatnot, look how fast you can make an awesome looking town or city, right? This is absolutely cool. Now, um, keep in mind though, if you are doing this on a mountain, you have to make sure that that surface is made live, right? Otherwise it won't uh, project on that. Now, the thing is here though, that now that we have this, we'll close down that uh, window. 
let's try and render this and see what happens, okay? So we're gonna go out to Arnold and I'm gonna go to render. And of course, nothing's gonna happen. And I knew that, but there you go. Right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go up to create and we're gonna go to lights and let's put in some directional light. Let's see if that changes anything, right? So I'm gonna hit R to scale that up. Okay guys, well it's time for a little sponsor break here. And with that, I can make any of these videos for you guys. So show them some love, right? And you actually might love this one. So if you need 3D models for a lifelike visualization that you're working on, you might want to check out Render People. They offer 3D posed, 3D rigged, and even 3D animated people models, right? And they have over 3,000 products right now. They cover uh, models suitable for business, shopping, sports, swimwear, evening wear, outdoor, and even specialty models like doctors, workers, and whatnot, right? So uh, they're high resolution, 8K maps, clean UVs, clean meshes, ready to go in 3ds Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, SketchUp, Unreal Engine 4, Unity, Blender, and Rhino. Now, if you guys use the link below, you'll not only help out my channel at no extra cost to you, but you'll also get free models, totally free models that are posed, rigged, and animated. Not that affects anything, but just so you can see it better. I'm gonna hit seven on my keyboard to uh, activate that light. Hit E to rotate that. So you can change the angle of the light, like so. And maybe even just take a polygon plane as a floor. And we'll just uh, pull that out like so. There you go. So that should definitely work, right? Okay, let's have a go. And I promise you, the only thing you will see is the plane that we just created. Just to prove my point that this is a paint effect and it is therefore not something you can render. Well, if you can't render it, what's the point, right? Well, the thing is you can convert it to something that you can render. So we're gonna select this and it will be selectable as an object. So if you go into the attribute editor, you'll see that it says stroke town one, right? And that's what we wanna change. So we have this selected and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to uh, modify, we're gonna go to convert, and then under convert, you can convert from paint effects to polygons. That's what we want. So if we open up the option box here, you have a couple of options here. You have a vertex color mode. Well, we're not gonna play around with that. We're gonna leave that alone. You have the quads output. That's what we want because we want quads, not triangles. So we're gonna click on that. And then you have hide strokes. Now the hide strokes is when you hold down your left mouse button and pull, you will have a little line sticking out. We don't want that, right? And then you have a poly count limit for the total. So how many poly counts or how many polys do you want for this entire town here? Well, right now it's set to, let's see, is that 100,000? I think, yep. So we're gonna hit convert. It shouldn't take too long. Uh, it says that there's an error. I'm not sure what that is. I think it's related to the texture. Okay, it says could not convert the texture. Not sure what the problem is there, but we're not gonna use that texture anyway, okay? So uh, let's see if we can now uh, go in and render. We're gonna go up to Arnold and hit render. And there you go, there's our town. So what we're just gonna do is we're gonna get this into frame here that would work i would say i'll move this out of the way we'll open up the attribute editor we'll go into that directional light let's open that and let's increase the intensity quite a bit and then i'll bring it back in and there you go so you can imagine that if you want to do something like this in your scene, uh, like I said, if you made a mountain uh, live and you populated these buildings and scatter them all over the place, uh, it could be pretty awesome. Now you can even go as far as to go in here and separate these. So let's say, we're just gonna bring that intensity down a bit. Let's say you don't want all the buildings, right? So you just painted this on and you want to kind of have control over that. So I'm gonna select the mesh, which is now a polygon mesh. And if you go into the attribute editor, right? You now have a group mesh here and you can go in and select numbers of that, or you can go into mesh and separate. Now, when you do that, you can go in. Let's give that a second. 
there you go so you can go in and you can select one or that one or you know some of them are groups some of them are individual and then you can play with that you can select this and do separate as well and there you have it and then you can go in and again this takes a little bit of time you can go in and select them one by one and delete them or scale them make them bigger change their position and so forth and so on right so a uh, very powerful tool um, I never see anybody use it uh, funny enough but there you go so hopefully John that uh, answers your question uh, thank you all so much for watching and uh, make sure you subscribe if you didn't do that just yet so you don't miss out on future videos and see you guys next time right bye Well, thanks for watching, and before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.